Welcome everybody back to another episode of Trekverse where today I'll be reviewing The Art of Star Trek The Kelvin Timeline and this is by Jeff Bond and published by Titan Books and we can see by the cover on the top part it's a very nice homage to the motion pictures that they did with that poster for Beyond and we see Khan in the middle to the left of him a prototype for Crawl and of course on the right Nero and on the bottom left a prototype for the USS Enterprise for Star Trek 2009 so let's just dig right in this is a hard bound book there's no dust jacket it's glossy embossed on the cover and let's start flipping through it and we see the nebula storm in Star Trek Beyond concept art and we see the warp sequence from Star Trek Beyond in the Delta this is a must-have for any collection very well presented very well put together just don't watch the review and not get the book you must get the book you will not be sorry you can't look at this enough Times. And then here we have the table of contents from the three movies, Star Trek 2009, Into Darkness, and my favorite, Star Trek Beyond with acknowledgments. So here's a forward by Justin Lin. And let me read some experts, excerpts excuse me, from the forward. The city on the edge of forever is arguably one of the greatest, if not the greatest, episodes in Star Trek canon. After filming was complete, Roddenberry said to a journalist friend that this episode was good enough to have been a motion picture. Dr. McCoy, in a fevered madness, stumbles backwards in time and consequently changes the future. Kirk and Spock must also travel back in time to stop McCoy, but we so soon learn that this is not done without great cost. And then here, beginning of 2009, and then here's we have the Kelvin, which kicked off the film, which was destroyed by Nero and his ship, the Narada. And then I, I liked how they kind of like did a little retro motif back to back to TOS, and we can see that very well in the the concept art. And there's Ian Church's concept art, very TOS like, more modernized, but still it had the the callbacks to the 60s series and I do like the illuminated deflector dish and of course I, I like to have was a single nacelle and then a single shuttle bay with the deflector dish and I'm glad it's illuminated I like the USS Kelvin's costumes. It's kind of like a combination between TOS and Enterprise. And then we see that. And of course, they, I like the bridge. Uh, they put more rotary knobs on the, the consoles. Kind of a throwback to TOS. And then, okay, here's the Kelvin shuttle bay and shuttlecraft. Kirk's mom given birth prematurely due to the attack on the USS Kelvin. I do like this shuttle. Then we have the sh it in the shuttle bay. You can't really put on film, how, you know, the pictures of this book and how nice they are. And then here we have the Narada. And if you've read the prequel comics, you would know that it was the mining ship of Nero was infused with Borg technology. And they went over that extensively in the graphic novel Star Trek Nero. Massive ship, one giant massive ship this was in. And the Federation almost did not survive. And I really like this coming out of the black hole. It is chasing the jellyfish, but in this prototype, it looks like a, some kind of 
Starfleet ship. And then we have the interior. Multi-level environment, like lily pads almost. And it was a very complex ship. It was sort of when Kirk and Spock beamed over, they were almost kind of lost in its massive size. And then here we have displays of the Narada. And we have like different concept art from how, how the bridge should look on this massive vessel. Everybody I know like Star Trek 2009, it's, it's, it's up there in one of my favorite all-time Star Trek movies. And then here we have concept art for Nero. And if you notice that their costumes in 2009 were because of their interment in the Klingon prison. So they had Klingon costumes, which they just jacked and then went on to their mission of Federation destroying and here is Rura Panthe. Sorry, I can't pronounce that. Uh, this is the prison planet. And then here are concepts of the, you know, the slave labor, along with concepts of the Klingons. They were in Star Trek 2009, but it's a deleted scene. And then it's time to slave away for the glory of the Klingon Empire. Kapla. I bet they weren't too complying. And. Future Iowa, and here we have designs of what the, the police biker should look like. And of course, his motorcycle, which turned out to be in the movie a hover bike. You wouldn't want to get a speeding ticket from this guy. And then we have the bar scene where Kirk famously gets in a fight and has toilet tissue hanging out of his nose. One of the aliens prominently in there. Very TOS concept art. And then here we have Star Trek Academy, Ryan Church's rendering of Star Trek Academy exterior. Futuristic buildings added to the San Francisco skyline in the background. Then we have the meeting where all the cadets meet and the graduates, where Kirk was awarded a medal. And then we have more concept art of Starfleet Academy. Nice. I thought it was nice that they put it on Earth, and it was more relatable, let's say, than TMP because it was, it was they were trying to do a such a sterilized, futuristic version, which they took out all the color, and I like TMP. Don't get me wrong. Then here we have the shuttlecraft, John Eaves's sketches for this, heavily armored. And we see them taking off to go meet the Enterprise and fly off to protect Vulcan from under attack by Nero. Then here we have some radical shuttle designs. Kind of almost like a worker bee, not quite. And totally alien, uh, angular, uh, curvular. Designed by Ryan Church. Then here we have the Kobayashi Maru. John Eves' sketch of the Kobayashi Maru. We have the bridge of the Kobayashi Maru. Favorite scene. First mentioned in Star Trek II, the Wrath of Khan. Nice tie-in. And then we have the Cleon Warbird, which I'm assuming it should be a D6. John Eves' sketch for the Klingons during the ship, during the Kobayashi Maru. And we have some more pictures of the Kobayashi Maru. And the aliens. If we look at the extreme alien designs, including a reimagined reptilian Gorn, we have some other aliens. And we also have an Orion girl. Vulcan, I really like this rendition of Vulcan and they kind of built upon it in Star Trek Discovery. Very nice, very in-depth pictures of Vulcan. Uh, rock formations. We see the beauty of Vulcan, a, a desert planet where these 
logical beings grew up in. And then here we have some more shots of Vulcan. Very, very much towering cities. One of the best screen renditions of Vulcan. And then we also have the Tantric Temple and early learning centers on Vulcan. Most notably when in the new Star Trek Discovery, Michael Burnham was there. So obviously art from the Kelvin timeline has influenced the new show. Star Trek Discovery on CBS All Access. Get yourself a subscription. Very nice layout of Vulcan, full page spread. And here we have the USS Enterprise, Ryan Church's famous design. The only, the only knock on this design I, w I have is that the nacelles need to be wider apart. And they fix this with the Enterprise A at the end of Beyond. And I love that illuminated deflector dish. Then we, here we have some prototypes from 2009 concept art. And how would it evolve? And then we have some concept art on the Battle of Vulcan. And the Enterprise is about to go under the, the defeated Federation saucer dish. Some more concept art of the 2009 Enterprise by Ryan Church. And I like that it didn't have that light bleed through on the nacelles. And then we can see right there the concept art of the Enterprise in the atmosphere of Saturn's moon Titan. And here she is being constructed in Iowa. That was such a touching, memorable scene of Kirk looking up at the Enterprise, which he one day would command. And then here's the bridge, AKA the heavily armed Apple store, which wasn't that bad. I, I think that they're gonna do a redesign of course for the Enterprise A bridge. And then we have the brewery concept art from the A. And I really like this. This is a separate section for the, the weapon station. Uh, I would like to see this in the new Enterprise A, but set with a bigger view screen. And here's Ryan Church's one of his finalized conception with yellow bazards, no lighted deflector dish, very TOS radar dish. And then here we have various concepts for enterprise engineering. And I think we're gonna get a linear work for with the next one. And there was enough. If I'm not mistaken, a Budweiser Brew Factory, but this is more scientific in the concept art. And then here we have a starbase which the Enterprise was launched from. The destruction of Vulcan, a very sad scene in the catacombs. A more expansive concept for Ark, which included a massive stairway that dialed down in the film version. And we can see concepts for the drill. How are they going to drill into the planet? The artist had to come up with it. You know, on the bottom left, more how it appeared on film. You can see a skydive. The black hole inserted in Vulcan. And then we have the, the sky beam drill. Delta Vega, where Spock was marooned on and was reunited with Kirk. Very touching scene. There's the monster that Prime Spock scared away. Very hideous creature but does not like fire. More concept art of Delta Vega. Less icy in this concept art. And then we have Scotty, Kirk, and Kessner in the concept art and a concept art for the Starfleet base. Concept art sprawling mining facility on Delta Vega that they draw from the film. Here's the base. And then of course we have more concept art that didn't make it like that. And then of course Spock Prime, played by Leonard Nimoy since 1966. His last appearance in the franchise was, was Star Trek Into Darkness and paid tribute into Star Trek Beyond and here he is. Boy, I miss his, seeing him on film in the new ones, but rest in peace.
And then, of course, we have his jellyfish ship that he tried to stop the supernova, supernova from devouring Vulcan. And then here we have concept art. There's the IDIC symbol of Vulcan right on it. Oh, I don't know if that actually appeared on film. I have to go look at shots on it. And then here we have, going back to it, looking at it, Enterprise versus Narada. The fate of the Federation hangs in the balance as the Enterprise takes on its enormous adversary. And then we can see how they were playing around with the different colored nacelles. I'm glad they cho chose blue, and there's the drill, drilling into San Francisco, which is called the Battle for Earth. Kirk was famous for it, and he, there's a drilling into San Francisco Bay. And then we get into Star Trek Into Darkness, Benedict Cumberbatch. And then we have Nabruru. I really liked this scene because it showed red vegetation that was, you know, we don't have that on Earth, really. Maybe in some plants. And then it was a beautiful shot. You know, even though Kirk technically violated the Prime Directive, it, it was sort of incorporating Starfleet's mission into seeking out new worlds. Maybe they just didn't go about it in the right way. And then we have the nice full plate page spread of Nabooru and concept art for the Nabooruns. They did appear on screen differently. They were more human-like in, in the darkness opening sequence. Some more concept art by John Eaves. And more concept art by John Eaves. And, and they sort of appeared like that. And then we have the suit, very reminiscent of TMP, Prime Spock wearing it, and very nice homage to, to that film by the design. Then here are some more John Eves Cold Fusion device. Here's the planet. And then, of course, concept art of Spock. Future London, where the Kelvin Library was blown up, blown up by the, the dastardly Khan. And there's the sick child in bed. Gets a blood transfusion. The jump, jump ship attack that killed Captain Christopher Pike. Mean looking little jump ship was not warp capable. Looks like a warp ring on that bottom one. Long range advanced torpedoes had Khan's crew secretly hidden in behind them. Scotty jumped in on one in a nice sequence and beyond, and there's a concept art of Khan's frozen crew. Technology, we can see Carol Marcus's profile. Hypo sprays, tricorders, communicators, and of course the blood transfusion thingy. Weapons. What Khan was using to defeat the, the clean on troops. That was kind of a nice <laughs> sequence, very well choreographed. Kronos. The fewer more dangerous places in the universe that are forbidding clean on homeworld and we can see that how they were trying to design it kind of like a metropolitan but alien at the same time and we can see more concept art cathedral like atmosphere and of course they used mud ship his daughter in the prequel comic ship nice note to harry mud and then they are inside of it and then we have early block designs for shuttles. And then, of course, the ship, how it closely repeared on film. Kronos. And in this time, the moon Praxis has already been destroyed. Then, of course, we have one of the most sculptural clean on ship designs abandoned for a few more familiar bird of prey appearance. Clean on articulation of the ship. A 
believe this was a D4. And here is he we have Khan. And a lot of people love him. A lot of people are still bitter about that. And there's Benedict Cumberbatch. But Ricardo Bond is no longer with us. And I'm glad a new generation got to have an augment. You know, in the genetic controversy that we're going through right now with stem cells and cloning. Very nice note to Loki in that one scene from Avengers. There's Jupiter facility. And I sort of like like this. It, you know, this one looks really alien on the top. Kind of some different shapes. And here is the USS Vengeance. The antithesis to the Enterprise. The evil Enterprise. Black to indicate its stealthiness. And of course, all, all kinds of elaborate interiors. Very dark. Of course, this was a Section 31 ship by Admiral Marcus that was later commandeered by Khan Union Singh. And then we have some very interesting concept art. And this is, and th in this concept art, the, the Vengeance was way different than the normal Federation ship. And then here we have the space jump. Kirk and Khan flying together through the vastness of space. The warp core, and this is actually designed off of real life versions of the National Ignition Facility at Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory. So, then of course here, we have the San Francisco Chase, very exciting, and the crashing of the USS Vengeance, like 9-11 type in England. And then of course, here we have Star Trek Beyond, nice homage to TMP. Directed by Justin Lin. And here's the Enterprise redesigned NCC 170A. On the left, bottom left, we had the refit. I'll be doing a video on the refit. And it appeared differently on screen than the concept art of the Enterprise A. And I have a video on the Enterprise A. I I wish you would check it out. I invite you to. And more TOS-like evolutionary than revolutionary. Now, this is the warp effect that was updated in the warp drive with a warp bubble creating gravitational lensing effect. Justin Lin loved the idea that was presented a liquid bubble traveling through the folding space dimensionally, so therefore you could get up to warp speed Based on real life gravitational effects, here's a shot of the bridge. And here are the uniforms. I like these better than the 09 and the darkness uniforms. These are more uniform-like. And of course, from the costume designer, I like my women feminine. But if she's a captain, we better know if she's a captain. In the original show, they had long sleeves and ranks, so we had to do that. And then on this page, we have some Admiral Marcus, or not Admiral Marcus, I'm sorry. Uh, hit, Carol Marcus in a Beyond, but she was not in the movie. Love the jackets from Beyond, the survival jackets. And here's Crawl's crew. Prototypes of Crawl, his crew, Kalara. Then we have a prototype of Idris Elba in uniform. Kind of call, many callbacks to the show Enterprise. Here's some aliens that didn't make it into the final film. Maybe a girlfriend for Kessner. Of course, Jayla. And we have the USS Yorktown. Gene Roddenberry's vision realized. This is where races, ethnicities, different species, they've all come together to live in harmony. And Gene Roddenberry's vision of the future realized. Sean Hargraves, of course, the designer. Then we have an 09 version of the Enterprise, not the refit. Here in this painting, they did change the Enterprise for Star Trek Beyond, the refit, and of course, Enterprise A. We have some more concept art of the 09 Enterprise in Yorktown Space Dock. Very orifice looking, alien like. Then, of 
Okay, and then we have sort of the command interface where they try to release the pathogen and Captain Kirk stopped him. And because of his actions, he was awarded the Enterprise A and he turned down the Vice Admiral position at the station. Here's some Yorktown badges, symbols. And again, very orifice looking. There's the Enterprise entering. Enterprise entering again from another angle. Yeah, I mean, th this concept art is really beautiful. You have to buy this book. I mean, to, there, there's no way to translate this on film where I'm filming this from my phone. There we have the destruction of the Enterprise. Sorry to see her go. This is the first time that the Kelvin Enterprise has been destroyed. Captain Picard actually holds the record for most destructions. And there's Ultimate. The place where the Enterprise met its doom. Felt like crying. I liked Ultimate. It, was, it had like a very industrial feel to it. Uh, when Crawl, when he took over the mining facility there, there was alien equipment that the drones formed one giant massive ship. Also kind of sort of a callback to 09. And we have Ultimate Surface. I like, especially like that bike scene of, you know, Captain James T. Kirk rescuing his crew, taking the USS Franklin, and going away to protect Yorktown. And then here we have Surface of Ultimate showing the planet's ring system visible through the atmosphere. Simon Pegg escapes the swarm attack in a photon torpedo, lands atop a mountain ridge on Ultimate, depicted in his concept artwork. And then here we have the USS Franklin, a nice, kind of a design, not a design, purposely on a design nod, but schematics of the Franklin showing the layout similar to early warp drive ship of the NX-01, something designer Sean Hargrave says was well, unintentional. There are only so many configurations of warp engines and discs you make. Very Matt Jeffries TOS-like, especially with the nacelles. And then here it is, was the concept for the USS Pioneer. The nacelles were downward, sort of like the Reliant, but was flipped upward by Justin Lin on his request. And then here we have it, concept art of it trying to lift off from the surface. And then we here we have the engineering, the bridge, and the transporter room. Nice callbacks to the show Enterprise with Mako, the hull plating, and it was the first Warp 4 capable vessel. Then here we have the rescue. Captain James T. Kirk rescues his crew to go off and to defeat Crawl to save the people of the USS or the Yorktown. Facing here are acknowledgments of the people that the author wanted to acknowledge. Very nice book. Very happy to have in my collection. There, there's so much in it that I couldn't have gone over it in a single video. And then we, here we have the Nebula Storm. On the back we have Khan, Crawl, the USS Franklin, Vulcan, and we have a diagram of the refit that was seen in Biran. And this is a book by Titan Books. The Art of Star Trek, The Kelvin Timeline by Jeff Bond. Get yours today.